Hey everybody, Kyle from Bolton E-Bikes back for another video and I'm pretty excited about this one. I will be honest, the style of e-bike that is in this box wouldn't be my number one pick for an e-bike, but I am still excited about what's in it because this company, which I should be specific about who, the Electric Bike Company, I know the name's a little generic, but go look it up, that's the real name. The Electric Bike Company reached out to me and said, hey, we saw some of your videos, we like what you're doing, would you review our bike? Now I know some of the other e-bike reviewing people on YouTube usually charge for their reviews. I don't wanna do that because I feel like, you know, maybe some people can do that without it influencing what they say about the bike. But I just said, yeah, send it to me. I will do an honest review. I'm not gonna charge you anything for it. However, I would like to give away the bike when I'm done with it. So stay tuned to the very end because you're gonna find out how you could win what's in this box. Now, speaking of the box, this thing is massive. So let me give you a visual just so you can understand how big this box is. This is a cruiser style bike. It is not a fat bike. Here's a Saunders bike, which is a big, fat, heavy bike. And the box is like half the size. Now, in case you're wondering why, honestly, it's just really good packaging. So number nine, which is packaging, is one of the requirements, one of the ratings I give on electric bikes when I review them. I started doing that with the Rad Rover review. So I would say the electric bike company wins on packaging. They didn't use FedEx or UPS, uh, kind of the standard smaller trucks. Uh, they used a commercial freight carrier with a lift gate to deliver this. It is on a pallet, well strapped down. Strapped down. You've got uh, these hard cardboard corners all over it. I highly, highly doubt we're gonna see any damage. But that's the first thing we gotta do is unbox it. But my preliminary guess is that this is gonna get a 10 on packaging. And hopefully I open this the right way because it's just a big box. It doesn't say open here, but I'm just gonna carefully cut open all the tape and Ooh, let's just see if it swings right open. I see a bike inside. I don't, I don't even know what color it is yet. I didn't ask, they didn't say. I figured if it was a surprise, that would be better. So far, this is looking really good inside. Let's pop open the other end. Oh yeah. So I wasn't sure how they were keeping the bike upright, so I will try and get this box off of here so you can see it. One of the things that they advertise for these as they come fully assembled, you do have to get the handlebar straight, which you have to do on most bikes. And that's part of the reason the box is so big is because the front wheel is on. The bike is completely upright inside this box. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna scoot it off the pallet. There we go. It's free! Sort of. We're almost there. We made it. Okay, well that gives you an idea. Oh, let's scoot it over on top of the box. That gives you an idea of how this was packaged in there and why it wasn't moving. So got a big foam block underneath the, kind of around the rear wheel. And this right here was keeping it from moving side to side or from up and down. Now I will have to say the pallet helped a lot because it was really clear, in my opinion, to the shipper 
so that you don't lay this on its side. Whereas a bike that, you know, is coming FedEx or UPS, they flip them over all the time. The last probably three bikes I've had delivered that came through FedEx or UPS, every single one was upside down, even though they clearly said this way up. Okay, so I think the bike is just setting into that block of foam. We've got the cardboard box set aside. Let's just try lifting or rolling it out. Yep, that was it. That is a big heavy duty kickstand. And now we've got our screen. Hey, I recognize that screen. That's a good sign so far. Looks like a piece of string holding on this big foam block on the back. And I'm gonna carefully remove that. Okay, so the handlebars are actually installed. They literally are just turned to the side. So when they said the bike was fully assembled and all I had to do was turn the handlebars straight, that was accurate. So as far as assembly goes, this is probably the easiest bike I have ever unpackaged. So I think we're gonna have to loosen up the stem a little bit to get these bars to come up so we can swing them around straight. And I see one more giant zip tie. So I'll go grab the cutters to get that off. So I'm gonna remove these last few bits of plastic and go from there. All right, we've got all the plastic off in the front basket. There was a little bag with some tools it looks like. So I'm feeling pretty confident that all of the Allen wrench sizes that we will need are gonna be in there. Uh, I see a few keys. I see something that looks like a little key fob. I don't know what that does yet because I haven't seen this bike. So let's find out. Let's get these handlebars straight first. Okay, so yeah, we've got a little uh, metric Allen set right here. Let's just see what size we need. A little stiff, but I never complain about free tools. Okay, perfect. So there's an adjustable stem right here, which is nice. That means you can get the bars to a comfortable height, but I think we just need to turn them a little bit so we can get it cleared over the frame. Okay, so the only thing you have to do is turn the handlebar straight. Unless there's a simpler method that I couldn't just figure out just now, uh, the handlebars wouldn't quite clear the frame right here as well as the basket. So I'm lifting the stem up and loosening it right at the handlebars. And hopefully by loosening that, we'll get enough clearance to turn them straight. And then of course I gotta turn the wheel straight. So that did it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the wheel straight and tighten those back up. And then this thing should be ready to ride. Okay, now like the other reviews, I've got nine points about electric bikes that I wanna actually give a rating and a score to. We already covered number nine in a way, that was the packaging. I kind of guessed that it might be a 10. Now that I've actually unboxed the bike, pulled it out, have it set up to ride, I'm gonna leave it there. I don't really see anything that they could have done differently packaging wise. I think it deserves a 10 because that's the nicest electric bike packaging job I've seen, especially at the price range they're at, it just was really well done. So well done on number nine, packaging. Score is 10, although that's number nine on the list. Number one though is range. Now they've got kind of an interesting setup on their website. They really want you to customize the bike to your liking and choose options. So the range could be different based on what battery you select. So you actually have different options. This one that is here has a 48 volt 17 point something amp hour battery. It's a little over 17 amp hours, but that is decently large. That is more than most electric bikes. So I think range wise, it's gotta have a good score. I don't wanna say it's a 10 out of 10 or a nine out of nine because it kind of depends on the battery you select, but I think it's fair to give them a nine out of 10 just because you have a selection that you can choose from. 
Now what I should go do is check their website and see what do they claim the range of this battery would be. So let's pause and I'll go find out. So I went and checked their website to make sure I was reading correctly and then I was reminding myself about something about the bike as well. So they claim with this battery 40 miles without pedaling or 80 to 100 miles with pedaling. I think that could be a little optimistic and here's why. Don't say, I'm not saying that's wrong because I think that could be possible. If you are on a flat area with this bike, I could see those numbers being possible. Where that's not gonna happen, however, is if you live in an area with a lot of hills, then that range just isn't gonna be realistic because it's a hub motor and you have a single speed drivetrain. So I think that's something to keep in mind. So I said I should give it a nine out of 10 and I'm gonna stick with that. If you are in a flat area, then I think those numbers are realistic. However, uh, I think that single speed might hurt it if you live in an area like I do. Now we're gonna go outside in a little bit and test it on some hills, so we'll find out for sure. Uh, but I think there's a chance that if you're in a hilly area, that range number could be reduced. But uh, two main battery options on the website, there's an 11 amp hour, a 17 amp hour. So very nice that you have options to choose from when you order the bike online. So number two on the list is the power. Now this comes with a Muxus or MXUS motor. It says 48 volts on it. And I believe they call this a 500 or 750 watt. Looks like I need to go back to the website again. I'm back. I just wanted to confirm and make sure I'm telling you the right thing because manufacturers are all over the place with their motor ratings, power ratings, and what the bike can actually do. So yes, it is a 500 watt rated motor. However, they say the bike is capable of peak outputs of about 1200 watts. So that makes sense. That means the bike probably has a 25 amp controller installed. And that's actually what I do on some of my models too. I have a controller that's capable of more power than what the motor is rated for. But to give it a firm score on the power, I gotta go ride it first. So let's take it outside and see how it actually goes. All right, so we're outside. I have the bike turned on and I've got a little bit of a hill up towards the airport here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and give this thing full throttle and see what happens. So here goes, no pedaling. And I'll try and watch the screen and see if the wattage actually jumps up as they say online. Let's go. Ooh, full speed. Probably should have checked the brakes first before I did that. Okay, and I should have tested it a little bit first. So on this particular bike, the way it's programmed, and because it's the KT screen, you should be able to change this, the pedal assist setting is also related to the throttle setting. So I had the pedal assist set to one, which means that it was limiting the throttle to like a level one amount of power. And then as I turn the pedal assist number up, I got more power. So that was a takeoff on number one. So now I have the power turned all the way up, hit the throttle once again, uphill, and we'll see how she goes. <laughs> okay. So I would say power wise, yeah, it's pretty decent. It's definitely more than 500 watts. I saw a little more than 900 watts on the screen for a moment. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that it would get up to 1200 watts because the battery is not fully charged. So because I just pulled this out of the box, I didn't give it a full charge. So it certainly has a little more oomph left in it. What I can say is that this is one of those 500 watt bikes that is substantially quicker than some of the 750 watt bikes that you see advertised online. Okay, so as far as a rating goes on the power, if I'm going to base that on a 500 watt hub motor bike, then I feel like I have to give it a 10 out of 10 because it 
over delivers on the amount of power they advertise for. You know, if they called this a 2000 watt bike or something, obviously score lower, but advertises 500 watts, capable of much more. So 10 out of 10 on the power works for me. And because I just came to a nice quick stop, I've had a couple of chances to check the brakes out. So this does come standard with the Tektro Dorado hydraulic brakes. So that's a pretty nice feature. I think as far as hydraulic brakes for e-bikes go, there aren't a lot of options yet. The Tektro seem to be the most common one. Uh, I have some Shimano brakes kind of custom fitted with uh, cutoffs myself, but I think that uh, the Tektros work very well. I'm gonna give them an eight out of 10. And the only reason I don't score those higher is because I do feel like there are higher quality hydraulic brakes and there's room for improvement in the future as more manufacturers start to offer more options. So very good for the bike. These are gonna stop this particular bike without any trouble at all because it's really not that heavy. And I don't expect you to do top speeds that are that terribly fast. Now, as far as the display goes, ooh, we'll peel that off. That looks so much better now. Actually comes with the color LCD 8H. That is the same display that I am putting on my new model of bikes. So I gotta say, if I'm using the display, then obviously I must approve. <laughs> the KT LCD 3 or the LCD 8H are basically the same. The 3 is just a black and white version and the 8H is a new color version. So they show the same basic information, your level of assist, your wattage, your miles per hour. Uh, and the main difference, of course, is that this one is in color and it is much easier to program. So that's a big plus in my book is the fact that you have the ability to just turn this thing off, turn it back on, and with a few quick button pushes, you can get to all of the programming settings very, very easily. So because of that, I think it deserves a 10 out of 10. If I was gonna build a bike, which I do, I would use and am using this display, and it even is the version that has a USB port tucked underneath if you wanna charge a phone or plug some other accessories into it. So happy with that choice. Uh, the only thing I gotta figure out, to be honest, is I see it says pedal assist off, and I need to go through the settings and figure out how to change. Okay, we're gonna ride this thing up a hill and see how it goes, because I'm not so sure about this single speed setup. So I'm gonna assist one, not enough power. So we'll get into assist two. Let's head up this hill and see how it does with just a single speed. So right now I'm on assist one and we're not making it. So let's give it a little more power. Now we're on two. Now this is a very gradual part of the hill. Just a slight grade up. So assist two, we're making it. But we're gonna get to a little bit steeper section. And this isn't the steepest part of this road. This is just convenient because it's right down the hill from, right down the street from the shop. So let's see what happens when we get up here. Bumping it up to three. We're doing nine, eight miles an hour. Let's bump it up to four. And I'm having to crank hard enough that I want more power. So we'll go to five. Big jump in power. Okay. So we're getting 12 miles an hour now. So that wasn't bad, better than I thought. So 
So what I did notice up the hill is that you get through one, not enough power, two wasn't enough, pedal assist three wasn't enough, four wasn't enough, and then as soon as you hit pedal assist five, there's a big jump in power, then it was easier to get up the hill. Um, so I made it up that one without too much trouble. I was drawing a little over a thousand watts and I really wasn't able to put in much of my own pedaling power. So I personally still think gears would be good, but it does have over a thousand watts available. So you can just crank up the power and use it. Which speaking of power, let's see how fast it goes. And that was 20.4, so we hit the cutoff limit. We might have to reprogram that. Okay, so we definitely made it up the hill. Uh, like I said, it was using about a thousand watts or a little more to get up that last hill and pedal assist five. So it could do it, but there is a steeper section of the road a little bit further down I didn't take it to. So I think for that, you'd really be pushing the motor to its max and cranking pretty hard on the pedals. So I can see the logic behind just giving the bike more power and making that available rather than putting gears on it. For me personally, I'd rather just have it come with a few gears. So I can certainly see that if you live in a reasonably flat area or just some small rolling hills, uh, you could get by just fine. When you get to a bigger hill, you just turn the power up a little bit and you'll be perfectly fine. Okay, so the next thing on the list I've got, which I've been keeping my handy list and other things in the basket as we ride around, uh, number five is components. Just overall, you know, what's the quality of the bike like? So the grips are really nice. They say electric bike company on them. They're comfortable. Uh, the bars are really wide and swept back. So if you like the upright, just really laid back seating position, uh, then you'll like it. If you prefer a more traditional, more traditional straight bar, you may not like the position of those curved bars. That's kind of a personal preference. Um, we already talked about the screen, that's really nice. The seat is pretty awesome if you like a large seat. It is massive, definitely bigger and more of a cushy seat than what typically comes on electric bikes. Usually people have to buy something like this separately. Uh, for those that are familiar with like the Cloud 9 or some of those types, this is as big or bigger than some of those. So very nice there. I think for the type of bike it is, that's good. The basket on the front is, as far as I can tell, very sturdy. The mounts are solid. It's got some pretty thick, what I think is steel, holding that on there. I don't think you're gonna have any trouble with that basket, no matter how much you load into that thing. So basket looks good. The seat is good. The grips, the brakes we talked about a little bit already. The rear rack is integrated into the frame. So it's just part of the bike. And so very, very strong. Same with the kickstand. It's a big heavy duty version. So I don't foresee you having any issues with any of those things. Now, if we move over to some of the extra few features, which I'm gonna call part of the components, there's a couple of things that are really unique that this comes with. Now, one of the things I talk about in other videos is batteries and proprietary batteries and how I kind of prefer to lean towards the more generic battery cradles and types, that way they're interchangeable or you can get replacements down the road. This one is definitely unique to this bike. However, I think it's pretty awesome. So let me show you a couple of the features. First of all, normally I don't really talk about the charger too much other than tell you what the amp rating is or things like that. Uh, but this one, if you look closely, is already on the bike. Most of them, it's a separate piece, and if you want to take it with you, you put it in a basket or a bag or a backpack. The charger is always with you. So literally, if you see an outlet somewhere, you can plug in because the cord is right here, and it's retractable. So you just literally pull this out, plug into an outlet, and then when you're done, 
it retracts back in place and disappears. And I did plug that in already. It's got kind of a red glowing light when it's charging. I hear a fan kick on, so there's actually a fan built in. So this whole case right here that contains not just the battery, but also has a charger built into it, so it's always with you. And then the other thing that's pretty interesting with this setup is the little key fob that I mentioned before that I didn't know what it was for. So press this little button and we just locked it. Now obviously there's nothing really locked at the moment, but if someone moves the bike, it starts making noise. So I don't know if it makes more noise or if it does anything else if you start moving it. Hey, there it goes. <laughs> so it doesn't take long for an alarm to start going off. And you just hit the unlock button to turn the alarm back off. So built-in alarm system, built-in charger, all part of the battery. So those are some pretty cool features that come standard. Same with the fenders. They got reflective parts on the end. So you got good quality components. You don't need to buy a rack or a basket or fenders separately. They're all on there ready to go. Now, as far as a score goes, I think all of the components are good, high quality parts. And for the price of the bike, depending on the options you select, these are in the $2,000 range. But based on the delivery and all the things you get, I I think the price is right for what they're doing. So the only downside, and I talked about this a little bit earlier, in my opinion, is, is the gearing. I, I would like to be able to pedal more when I'm going up a hill and not relying on the motor, which I think is gonna hurt that range. So again, if you have a flat area, my score on the range still stands, but if you live in a hilly area, be aware that your range is gonna go down and not having gears, I think is gonna affect that to some degree. But they did think of this to a certain point. Although it doesn't have gears and a derailleur on it, there is a mount for a derailleur built into the frame. There are mounting spots for the cables already there. So if you took this to any bike shop, they would very easily be able to put a few gears and a derailleur on the bike. So it is set up and ready for it. It just doesn't come with it. So my hope is they add that in the future. So I'm gonna knock off a couple points for that. That's just my opinion. And I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10 on the components because overall the bike is really nice and I don't think you will be displeased with the quality whatsoever. Now the next thing on my list is support. I'll be honest, as far as I know, there aren't a lot of people that are familiar with the electric bike company. Um, it seems like they're just putting a push as far as I can tell and getting things out there. And so I haven't heard of any experiences from other customers, really good or bad. Uh, I can only give you my experience, which they were always very good at communicating with me They've got phone numbers and things on their website. They were easy to talk to. And my first question earlier when I got on the bike was, how come the screen says no assist? So I went to their website, went to uh, basically a, oh, I can't remember what it was called on the website now, but there was a section for support or for a knowledge base of sorts. And the very first video was, how do I turn on the pedal assist? So if you go to their website, I think the most common questions they've already prepped for and they've already answered for you is very thorough. So I think their support is gonna be very good. You know, I'd like to say they're gonna be an eight out of 10 or nine out of 10, but that's somewhat subjective because I just haven't dealt with them a whole lot. I can only go based on my experience, which so far I have zero complaints about uh, so my personal experience is 10 out of 10, but I don't know if that's the case for regular customers. Now, as far as number seven on the list, that's community. Now, what I mean by that is, are there people writing these? Is there an online group? And not that I really know of. So maybe after this video, more people will start getting together and realize that these bikes are out there and that they're a pretty fun cruiser style of bike. 
but I'm not aware of a big community out there. Um, so I can't really give it a score because maybe there is something I've missed. So we're gonna have to just cut that one out for now because I don't know if there is one, at least not that I could find. So number eight is customization. And this is what they're really striving for. We talked about this on the phone a bit, is eventually they wanna be able to have total customization available when you order. So you can select the color of the bike, the battery size, you can select all these different options and have the bike basically built and outfitted before they ship it to you. So you're not selecting an off the shelf bike that's already in a box. You order it based on your specifications, they do the final assembly and then you get it sent to you. So as far as customization goes, I think they should get a 10 out of 10 because they're working on options to make it as customizable as possible. And the last thing, number nine on my usual list of nine points is packaging. We already covered that. So just a short review or kind of overview on all the different things that we covered. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the bike. The quality's good, the components are good. I really don't have any complaints aside from the lack of gears, which depends on the area you live in, so it may not even apply to you. I think the price point is a little more than some of the other bikes that I've either reviewed or showed on my channel, being in the mid $2,000 range. But if you want something that's delivered in nice packaging, is set up ready to go, and is overall just really convenient, then I think this is a good option. So I do have a referral code for you if you like this style of bike and this is something you'd wanna order. So if you go to the Electric Bike Company's website and you order one of these, you can use the coupon code, let me make sure I'm getting this right, Bolton eBikes with an S, so that's B-O-L-T-O-N eBikes, and just put that in there and you'll get $50 off of your purchase for one of these. And that kicks back a little bit of something to me as well. And because of that, I'll keep more of these videos going. So I only get rewarded if somebody actually buys one of these. Now, I did also say I was gonna give one of these away. Well, I'm not just gonna give one of these away, I'm gonna give this very bike away. So once this video wraps up, I'm gonna take this, put it back into that super nice packaging that we had, get those straps back on there, and get it nice and tidy, and one lucky person is going to win this electric bike. So first thing I want you to do is hit that subscribe button, hit the like on this video, then I would like you to go down into the comments section and just tell me if you've ever ridden an electric bike before. Uh, I'd be interested to hear people's opinions, what they think of this model, uh, but I'll make sure to put a link in the description for the formal giveaway. So go ahead and click on that link. Make sure that you enter to win. It's always done at random, so even I don't know who is going to win. But once again, well over $2,000 bike is going to be given away, including the shipping. Uh, somebody in the U.S. is getting this really nice black cruiser bike. Uh, now just kind of in closing, I would say it's really nice. I kind of went over all the components and everything already. Would I buy it? Well, I gotta be honest, me personally, no, I wouldn't. But I wouldn't usually buy any cruiser style of bike. I grew up mountain biking and that's what I primarily like to do. There are some practical things like cargo bikes and folding bikes that I like as well. But when it comes down to it, if there's one bike I really love, it's something that can go off-road and on trails, which this is not designed for at all. So although I wouldn't buy it, if this is the type of bike you're looking for, I would highly recommend it. Thanks again for watching Bolton eBikes. I will be back with more videos on eBikes very, very soon.